Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangi reporting for The Media Speaks. Oh, friends, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. There's no way we can let this happen, friends. I've got, like, the absolute worst... There's no way I could read this story and not do this. Here's exactly what's happening, friends. They are about to pull the plug on a baby named Olivia right before her first Christmas after she beat cancer. Now, I'm going to read you the story, and don't leave. Don't leave because it ends with me being very, very cold. Don't leave. If, you re if you've tuned in and you hate me, this is your chance to prove that you hate me. Don't tune out. Paul Joseph Watson, uh, as we call him, PJ Dub from Prison Planet. Born on February, baby Olivia has beaten cancer. She has never been in a vegetative state, that means not brain dead, nor does she suffer from a terminal or incurable disease. However, because she has been suffering from reoccurring infections and has been in intensive care for almost a year, health authorities at the London Great Ormond Street Hospital, <laughs> Great my have indicated that they could withdraw treatment in a matter of weeks. According to Olivia's parents, PJ Dub wrote, they have also been threatened with having their access to Olivia removed by social services because they complained about health care procedures in the hospital. Yeah, things like pulling the plug and killing the infant. All of, Olivia, excuse me, now needs our help to survive her first Christmas. Her parents, who have been by her side every day for 10 months, are trying to raise money to get Olivia moved to a different hospital in Europe, where intensive care can be continued. And it says you can donate whatever you can afford. Uh, look up youcaring.com slash medical fundraiser, Olivia. It's a long name, unfortunately, but you'll find it right away. You can also go to facebook.com and uh, Olivia's voice, facebook.com slash Olivia's voice. All right, guys, I am donating. I'm not just doing the ice thing. I'm just not... I don't want to get into it. I, I'm donating. So, cause people, a lot of people that do the ice bucket challenge don't donate. I am donating. Okay. Here's what I'm doing. If five people go to my Facebook page, take a picture of your envelope. Don't give me your address. That's not what I'm asking. Show me your envelope. Uh, take a picture of not the numbers, your credit card. And somehow prove to me that you have donated if five people between now and Christmas Day donate any amount, I don't even want to know what amount. It could be a penny. Donate something to this little girl. I will not only ice bucket myself, and as you can tell by looking at me, I don't like trends, but I, I will join the stupid little trend. I will ice bucket myself, and I'll one-up it. I will do it shirtless, and I will do it with nothing but shorts on, and I'm going to wear shoes. I don't want to stick to the ground on Christmas Day, at some point between midnight and midnight, I will, in fact, ice bucket myself. And, well, Christelle, why not? If 10 people do it, Serenity, the singer of Passing Time, will also do it with me. She will do it in a bikini. And uh, she also gets to wear some kinds of shoes because we can't have her stick in there like a Serenity sickle. It's going to be great. Wait, does Serenity know that you're doing this? <laughs> How many of you listening to this? I'm going to get to the other news. How many of you listening to this know Serenity? If I tell her this, she won't do it. I, it's got to be a surprise for band practice. She's going to kill you. Oh, it's for a good cause. So, friends, uh, do me a favor. Donate what you can. Donate to five people. Five Wait, people. It's only going to take five people? Five. For you? Yes. Well, here's one. Serenity's oh, gonna kill me. Serenity's, Serenity uh, is gonna kill you. There's five dollars. She wants to ruin Serenity's Christmas, which is also really funny. Uh, Christelle donating. No, not Serenity, you. Oh, oh, great. It's me. All right. Well, if you would like to see that happen to me, look, you can afford it. Christelle, are you rich? Um, not if I'm working for you, no. See, there you go. Everybody can afford to give something. So please do. I will ice bucket myself and our band singer if nine more of you do it. Five. Four more for him. Yeah. Four people. Four people donate money to this little girl, and I'll do it on Christmas Day. All right, guys, that's the most I've got. That's all I can do for her. We are going to move on. This is also by Dumb Luck from Paul Joseph Watson. 
this is our gun update. Watch what happened when two thugs started a gunfight with a 74-year-old woman. Neighbor blames store owner for defending herself against robbers. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. This neighbor, I mean. Listen to this. All of you that say, what about Sandy Hook? Do you know how many more times guns are used to save lives when they are in jeopardy in ways that they shouldn't be than they are used to put lives in jeopardy in ways that they shouldn't be? That is indisputable fact, okay? Here we go. A 74-year-old woman came out on top of a gunfight with two criminal thugs after they tried to rob her pawn shop in Springdale, Arkansas this past weekend, but was subsequently blamed by her neighbor for daring to defend herself. Let me tell you what, uh, Christelle's family lives in Arkansas. You don't want to mess with people in Arkansas. Ask Dallas. Marcus Gold and love you, Dallas. Marcus Gold and Leonu Roberson walked into the CNS gun and pawn shop on Saturday morning, intent on stealing thousands of dollars worth of items. But what they didn't bargain for was a wily gun owner who could shoot better than they could. It says they split up. They both pulled out guns, handguns that looked like black semi-automatic pistols, and began to rob the store, according to Lieutenant Derek Hudson with the Springdale Police Department. One of the employees also pulled out a weapon, and there were shots exchanged. The video shows 74-year-old store owner Shirley Cornett drawing her 38 revolver and shooting one of the suspects in the arm before one of them shoots back. Cornett was hit, but the bullet did not break the skin because it was deflected by a stack of books. It's good to read. The two then flee the pawn shop, having stolen just a single bracelet. Says police later found gold in a nearby hospital and also subsequently snatched Roberson following a chase after he made the mistake of visiting his accomplice. So he was also a genius. The bracelet was later found in Robinson's red Buick LeSabre, which was used as a getaway car. Given that the incident serves as a poster child for the Second Amendment rights, it's unlikely to get any national media coverage. It hasn't. In a disarmed America, only criminals would, have, would be packing heat in this situation. In other words, the law-abiding citizens will do what the law tells them and criminals will continue to be criminals and they will use guns on people that gave their guns up. Somewhat unbelievably, Cal Gandai, who should be getting the Dunce Cap of the Month, Month Award, a manager of the nearby Scottish Inn and Suites, blamed Cornette for the trouble, accusing her of unnecessarily firing her gun in heavy traffic, despite the fact that the incident occurred inside the store. No, she has a pawn shop without any walls. Presumably, Gandhi thinks that business owners in the area should just invite criminals and to rob them with zero resistance whatsoever. It's not right, said Gandhi, adding that she was really upset. Well, you know what? We are not going to roll over and let the thugs of the world have their way with us, Gandhi idiot. It's not your Christmas that would have been ruined. Uh, this is uh, it's more like a Paul Joseph Watson kick here. I didn't plan it this way. I really did, but... Paul Joseph Watson, coming up with great articles. I really didn't plan this. Another positive gun story that you won't see on the national media. It says a 14-year-old boy protected his grandmother, this is uh, within the last 24 hours, from intruders by shooting one of them dead last night. And yet another example of a positive gun story that you won't see reported by the mass media. It says brothers Asai Delsid and Carlos, Carlos Delsid attempted to break into a home on Southeast Charlotte around 5 p.m. yesterday when they crept around the back porch and tried to get in through the window. George Wyant's 14-year-old son confronted the robbers, ordering them to stop and telling them he had a gun. When the intruders ignored him, so he did warn them, the boy quickly fired off his grandfather's Glock 380 killing Asai Delsid while the brother fled the scene. Police later arrested Carlos, uh, having quickly tracked him down via his electronic monitor. Get this, he was already on probation for breaking into the same house twice in the last four months. So he had a, a bracelet on him, like a house arrest bracelet, I guess. He still went back and did it after getting busted having done it. How stupid. Stupid! According to WSOC-TV, the brothers had a background of criminal behavior and drug issues. 
Wyatt said the likely target of the robbery was the wife's prescription pills. In other words, they were taking a sick or dying woman's medication. You're going to ask me, Sam, why aren't they getting the Dunce Cap of the Month award? Because one of them died, and I'll have to mail it to the family. This, this, this They have a mother and a father. I, I'm not going to do that. That would be uh, bad taste. But otherwise, yes, they would have gotten the Dunce Cap of the Month award. It's out of respect for the family. Wyatt was grateful for his grandson utilizing the gun to protect his elderly wife, who is sick and virtually immortal. What would have happened if he didn't have it, if I didn't get out and get it, asked Wyatt, adding that he had trained the boy at the local firing range, so he wasn't just some freak with a gun. The 14-year-old father, George Gregorio Hernandez, was murdered back in 2008 in the shooting of an automotive store. So basically, this poor 14-year-old boy, in 2008, wait, I mean, he was just a little boy, lost his dad to a murder. And he was about to lose how many more of his family? Maybe himself. So thankfully, thankfully, you know what? He protected himself. May God bless him and may this not haunt him. He did the right thing. That's your gun update. All right, guys, independent.co.uk. Risks of nuclear war rising because of global tensions and insecure stockpiles, warns experts. Keep in mind, and I, I took the article down because they had a pop-up video and that annoys me, but Russia is now putting nuclear missiles on trains so that they don't have any one spot and it makes them easier to launch at targets such as the United States. So please don't tell me that Putin is any better than Obama. These are two people who are vying for the best spot in the New World Order. Putin is not anti-New World Order. He is not this great libertarian, freedom-minded person. Why is it that you don't trust people that we know have ties to the CIA here? But you, how many of you listening to this trust Putin? He's from the KGB, which is the CIA of Russia. So please don't come at me with this notion that because he's against Obama, who's a terrible president, that we somehow need to be licking Putin's boots because Putin is also a rotten person. There's no patent on rotten people. Urgent action is needed to minimize the risk of a nuclear war. More than 120 senior military, political, and diplomatic figures from across the world have warned. And I've already, you can look up the correct views, nuclear war. I've covered this repeatedly. I've covered Fukushima and Chernobyl repeatedly. Look at what these radionuclides do. Even a very small, very limited nuclear exchange would have repercussions that would be nightmares that will make Stephen King novels look like Mother Goose stories. I'm telling you. Ahead of the Vienna Conference on the Humanitarian Impact of Nuclear Weapons, it goes on. It starts today. The experts wrote in a letter that the danger of such a conflict was underestimated or insufficiently understood by world leaders. The signatories include people from across the political spectrum, such as former Conservative Defense Secretary Lord King, a Labor counterpart Lord Brown, former Secretaries Margaret Beckett and David Owen, and former Liberal Democrat leader Sir Menzies Campbell, John McCurl, former NATO deputy, and on and on and on. I'm going to lose all my listening audience. But basically, it's all the movers and shakers in, in this entire debate. Tensions between nuclear armed states and alliances in the Euro Atlantic area and in both South and East Asia remain ripe for the potential for military miscalculation and escalation. Yeah, miscalculation. Somebody thinking that an attack has happened because Russia wants to bring their nuclear submarines right in front of our doorstep, or they want to go flying their aircraft into other countries. Or because Obama wants to see how close he can bring the lines into the Ukraine. I've got no sympathy for the Ukraine. Why? Don't be Russian. Don't be the European Union. Either be Ukrainians or shut the hell up and get conquered. I am tired of, we need to be European. We need to be Russian. Why can't you be Ukrainian? What is wrong with you? It says, in a vestige of the Cold War, too many nuclear weapons in the world remain ready to launch on short notice, greatly increasing the chances of an accident. This fact gives leaders faced with an imminent potential threat an insufficient amount of time to communicate with each other and act with prudence. 
There should also be better crisis management in conflict hotspots and new security measures. A warning that stockpiles were insufficiently secure, making them possible targets for terrorism. If you don't believe this, remember, it's just a couple installments ago, look up ISIS nuke. I report on how ISIS took uranium that was being used for peaceful purposes in a college. They were using it to teach. They took it, and now the whole world is in danger of a dirty bomb explosion because this wasn't secured. So this is a very big deal. And as both countries are edging towards war with each other, these things being rogue are a huge problem. Friends, I got three stories to get to. Don't zone out on me, whatever you do. I just want to invite you to check out the Arcadia Grill because the Arcadia Grill has absolutely delicious food. Get the ravioli, get the best Italian bread you've ever had, salad big enough to feed an army, and a bar that makes the best drinks you've ever consumed. They're located on Court Avenue, friends. It is the Arcadia Grill. The next story brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. Look him up on Facebook.com. Uh, Mike McLaughlin is an author of some of the best writing extant today, and the more, you, more traffic he gets, the more of you that buy stories, the more this guy can afford to focus on his craft, which is writing, and he's very good at it. Um, torrentfreak.com, this made me sick. Swedish police raid the Pirate Bay site offline. I hope Anonymous strikes back at these people so bad that they will think the Pirate Bay is uh, a distant memory compared to how bad their systems are destroyed. I would like to ask, uh, I would love to see Anonymous really strike back for this. Yes, I said it. Police in Sweden carried out a raid uh, in Stockholm today, seizing servers, computers, and other equipment. At the same time, the Pirate Bay and several other torrent-related sites disappeared offline, although no official statement has been made. TF sources confirm against TPB. Well, you say Sam the Pirate Bay is giving you movies for free. The Pirate Bay also has people storing things on that site 100% legal. You can't just go shutting it down all willy-nilly, because if you do, now you've ruined a lot of people's incomes and entertainment and perfectly legal activities. For many years, the Pirate Bay has been sailing by the seat of its pants, so any downtime is met with concern from its millions of users. This morning, for the first time in months, the Pirate Bay disappeared offline. A number of concerned users emailed TF for information, but at that point, technical issues seemed the most likely culprit. However, over in Sweden, authorities have just confirmed that local police carried out a raid in Stockholm this morning as part of an operation to protect intellectual property. B.S. Um, the update on this, it said that uh, according to the police, the raid targeted a data center in NACA, which is built into a mountain, and that the Pirate Bay's forum, Super Bay Org, is also offline. The same goes for bayimg.com and pastebay.net. There were a number of police officers and digital forensic, forensic experts there. Well, you know what? I hope Anonymous mushes that police department server in every way that doesn't affect uh, ambulatory and emergency services. I, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. I hope suddenly all the people that own parking tickets vanish off the system. That's what I hope. I hope it costs you thousands, you rotten, filthy people. Scum! Getting into other people's business where you have no business being there. WND.com. Two more stories to get to. Death penalty for smuggling Bibles. Why is our country a friend of Saudi Arabia. They are the most vile people ever. Let's bomb them. No, that's not what I said. Let's shut them down by refusing to do business with them until this ends. Listen to this. Unconfirmed reports of a new decree imposing the death penalty for anyone caught smuggling Bibles into Saudi Arabia has many Christian ministries and support groups on edge. Yeah, because our government... Both Bush and Obama support this the rotten this rotten country, like they're like there's some kind of great ally to us when they they're horrible. They're, they're the main reasons the towers fell. Practicing any religion other than Islam has long been illegal in the desert kingdom, and that includes rules against foreigners bringing in any type of religious material that does not conform to the royal family's strict Wahhabi brand of Sunni Islam. You know what? They can get down on all fours and suck a fart out of my, my rear end and then raid it on Yelp. That's what I think of their uh, Wahhabi brand of BS. 
Foreign nationals living in Saudi Arabia are often detained for purely religious reasons, sometimes resulting in deportation. Oh, but they're our friends! Supplying capital punishment, which in Saudi Arabia often means death by beheading, to Bible smugglers would signal a new level of prosecution even for the Saudis. Yeah, who beat and uh, disfigure and hurt women for driving a car. Several Christian mis missionaries said they were seeking to confirm a recent report by the Virginia-based Heart Cry Missionary Society that a new death penalty law has been adopted, citing an official statement in Arabic of a Coptic Christian website called Cops Today. There's links for all of that in the article. The law reportedly extends to the importing of all illegal drugs and all publications that have a prejudice to any other religious belief other than Islam. It's 4.20 in the morning. Friends, you'd have to be stoned to even believe it. No response from Saudi Embassy. WND made three requests via phone and email to Saudi Arabia's U.S. Embassy press officer in Washington asking for confirmation or denial of the report. A woman at the Saudi Embassy who identified herself only by her first name, Cecilia, said that she made all three emails, she made sure that all three emails were received by the press officer, uh, Nail Al Jabir, then he has not responded. So this is more of our great friends, the Saudis, and it goes on to list other things they've done to us. Uh, by that I mean Christians, for no reason whatsoever, and yet we continue to help them and call them friend. And really, I'm in favor of us pulling all support out of Saudi Arabia, drill our own damn wells, take care of our own oil, and get out of Saudi Arabia. Let these animals, and I do mean leaders, not Islamic people, let these animals just kill each other. Leave. Departe. All right, guys, that brings us to the dum of the day. Goes to Greenpeace. How many times is Greenpeace going to show up on something that has to do with the word dumb? This is from RT. Greenpeace activists damage ancient Nazca lines of Peru to seek criminal damages. The Nazca lines, for those of you that don't know, Christelle didn't know. I was shocked. Uh, there is clearly a bird carved into the stone. There are lines that line up to a lot of different things. It can only be seen from the air. We have no idea how they even did these so symmetrically perfect or what they were for. Um, supposedly nothing flew there. Many of us believe a whole bunch of things were flying. In any event, these are some of the most ancient um, artifacts, sites in all of human history. And Greenpeace has ruined part of it. Peru, it says, is to press charges, thankfully, against Greenpeace activists who believe in global warming when it's not happening. After damage caused to a UN World Heritage Site, the Nazca Lines, during mass action to raise the profile of the group. The group left their footprints in the sand during the stunt, according to a top government official. It's a true slap in the face at everything Peruvians consider sacred, Deputy Culture Minister Luis Jaime Castillo said after Greenpeace took the action on Monday, reported AP. Greenpeace unfurled a giant banner at the beginning of the week reading, quote, Time for change, the future is renewable Greenpeace, end quote. It had set it up next to the hummingbird-shaped formation, which, again, we have no idea what this huge bird is even doing there in a place that can only be seen from the sky. Entrance to the area is strictly prohibited. The Nazca culture was prevalent in the region between approximately 100 B.C. and 800 A.D., and the imaginary figures imprinted in the ground are thought to have had astronomical functions. That's even before Ruth Bader Ginsburg was joined. Did you hear that? They are thought to have astronomical functions back in 100 BC. Nonetheless, the banner was intended to be viewed by delegates from the 190 countries who had been attending the climate change talks in Lima. Castillo said that charges of attacking archaeological monuments would be pursued. These could potentially result in six years imprisonment for the activists involved. The government is additionally seeking to prevent the responsible parties from leaving the country. I say wonderful. They're there trying to push Agenda 21's a man-made global warming lie. And for the, 
for the sake of a lie, they destroyed an artifact of which we don't even know for sure what it was used for. They are very fragile. They are absolutely fragile, he says. They are black rocks on a white background. You walk there and the footprint is going to last hundreds or thousands of years, Castillo said. And the line that they have destroyed is the most visible and most recognized of all. Greenpeace spokesman Tina Lufbein told the agency that Greenpeace members had been absolutely careful to protect the Nazca lines. Well, obviously not. However, she added that the group was taking the incident very seriously, but declined to mention whether names of the members would be released to the general public. Oh, where's Anonymous once again? Peru has nothing against the message of Greenpeace. We are all concerned about climate change. That's because you're adult said Castillo, but the means doesn't justify the ends. Greenpeace has made a mess out of everything they've ever touched. They are trying their best to tax you for a lie that is man-made climate change. And it says they've in repeatedly incurred the wrath of governments and corporations through their actions. In March, seven activists were arrested for spreading out banners on the roof headquarters of Procter & Gamble in protest of the usage of palm oil. Friends, that's why they get the dummy of the day. Um... I swear. You're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks. Do me a favor if you get a chance and donate to The Correct Views. You can do so at... Uh